this has got to be like towards the beginning of the video, but let me just say this character is too much fun for me to not feel biased in this review. I am sorry. This character is a lot of fun to play. If you like big numbers, if you like just stupid stuff that just doesn't like typically, I can't even exp I don't have words. Here is a draft service agreement for your review and consideration. Effective immediately if all is in order. Ah, wait a sec. I forgot to sign it. Ganyu. There. This is Ganyu. Now, I hope that you guys aren't going to be too upset with me switching the schedule around just a little bit. Uh, Zhongli was supposed to be the next character that we take a look at, but with, with you know, all the hype on Ganyu, I can't, I can't pass up the chance to talk about her. I mean, I, I've been looking forward to getting this character for quite a while. So, we are going to take a look at a couple of things, um, kind of a couple of different weapons and artifact builds and stuff like that that you can kind of try to play around with in this early bit of uh, testing and kind of get used to the character. So first thing that we're going to talk about is actually our talents. Now, I will go ahead and preface this. I do try to have uh, level sixes on everything, but uh, I I didn't have the resin and uh, materials to get uh, her <laughs> elemental skill up to level six. But I don't think that is going to be the biggest issue today. So please bear with me. So our normal attack is called <laughs> Liu Tian. Liuchen, Liuchen, I don't know. Archery performs up to six consecutive shots with a bow. Her charge attack is quite unique. It performs a more precise aim shots with increasing damage. It does turn into cryo damage at a fully charged shot, but it actually has two full charges. So this is kind of important because at first level, you literally just charge it and fire it just like every other bow character. But if you hold it for just a tad bit longer and it charges actually quite fast to get to level two, it actually fires off a cryo damaging frost flake arrow, which is slightly different. Upon hitting the frost flake arrow actually kind of like explodes and blooms is how it words it here, but it blooms and just like rains down some, some, some ice shards, which is super, super cool. And then of course we do have our plunging attack, which is uh, pretty much the standard fall from the air with style. So you can kind of see how all of this stuff works here. So we have all of our uh, normal attacks. This is at level six. We do have our aim shot uh, at level one. And you can see what it looks like at our frost flake arrow damage. And then the bloom damage is a whopping 305. It's insane. <laughs> you you'll see some some stuff on this one uh this is pretty nutty uh and then you can see plunge damage um and then the low and the high plunge damage as well next we have our elemental skill which is called trail of the Killing. Uh, living a single ice lotus behind Ganyu dashes backwards, shunning all impurity and dealing AoE cryo damage. Uh, the ice lotus itself that it leaves behind continuously taunts surrounding enemies and attracts them to attack it. Endurance is scaled based off of Ganyu's max HP and blooms profusely when destroyed or once its duration ends, dealing cryo damage. So basically this is just like Baron Bunny, except Baron Bunny dances but essentially this is just a kind of like a, a very similar situation to amber or even mona in some situations where it just taunts the enemies and gets them to kind of focus on it while you do other stuff and you can see here how much hp it inherits from your max hp remember that if you want to scale this up you can build max hp into your stats uh skills damage and then the duration and the cooldown our elemental burst is celestial shower so coalesces atmospheric frost and snow to summon a sacred cryo pearl that exercises evil Plural. during its ability duration the sacred cryo pearl will continuously rain down shards of ice striking opponents within an aoe and dealing cryo damage so essentially um the testers at the ganyu mains discord server which i will try to remember to leave a link down in the description below if i don't someone yell at me and i'll i'll do it uh but based on what we have seen this particular skill this actually creates 50 icicles across the 15 seconds uh, basically you get one per third of a second um so this this actually creates a ton of damage um they do 98 percent of your attack already as damage which is pretty nutty its duration is 15 and cooldown is 15 so essentially you can fire this as soon as as it expires on field which is pretty crazy as long as you have the energy recharge to get it that's pretty nutty um, but one of the best things about this is you can kind of group a bunch of people together with something like sucrose or venti or i mean even things that taunt like mona or amber could potentially help you but typically like an, a, an animo character that can group uh, really easily 
it just it does insane damage it really just pummels the ice shards down it's just really really nutty next we do have undivided hearts this is our first ascension talent uh after firing a frost flick arrow the crit rate of subsequent frost flick arrows and their resulting bloom effects is increased by 20 percent for five seconds so being said we are a cryo user uh <laughs> Crit rate is like a thing that we don't really <laughs> ever worry about if you build it that way. Um, but the fact that you can get extra crit rate built into uh, just doing extra damage, that's that's perfect. Next, we have Harmony Between Heaven and Earth. So this is our Ascension level four, but this is our second Ascension talent. So Celestial Shower or our Elemental Burst grants a 20% cryo damage bonus to active party members in the AOE. So this is actually, I think a lot of people were saying that uh, Ganyu is going to be a support. She's, you know, going to give cryo damage and she's just going to enable other characters, you know, for melt and stuff like that. But she really doesn't feel like a support. You could definitely play her like that, but this goes along with so many other things than just being a support this a4 right here grants her extra cryo damage bonus which if you're building cryo into her she's got nutty freaking numbers and it's just insane how good she can be just based off of cryo damage it's pretty crazy and then our throwaway talent is preserved for the hunt refunds 15 percent of ores when crafting bow type weapons i actually used it so i can't i can't knock it now for our constellations at c1 taking damage from a charge level 2 frost flake arrow or frost flake arrow bloom decreases the opponent's cry resistance by 15 percent for six seconds so the way that resistance works is as you reduce it you are going to be able to reduce it into the negatives for an enemy although it doesn't necessarily reduce like if the enemy only has 10% resistance normally to cryo and you reduce it by 15 it's going to reduce the full 10 to get them to zero but anything after zero is halved so you're going to end up giving them 2.5% extra cryo damage with this specific constellation but you can stack a ton of uh, resistances and make you know pretty nutty damage but anyways a hit regenerates two energy for ganyu and this effect can only occur once per charge level two frost flick arrow regardless if frost flick arrow itself or if its bloom hits the target at level two we have trail of the killing gains one additional charge i really like this i wish this i i kind of wish i could get this uh but anyways at level three we have celestial shower getting three levels which is fine at c4 opponents standing within the aoe of celestial shower take increased damage this effect strengthens over time right so the increased damage taken begins at five percent and increases by five percent every three seconds up to a maximum of 25 percent and the effect lingers for three seconds after the opponent leaves the aoe this is insane this is so insane for damage like an extra 25 percent damage just for literally being inside of the aoe of this ult if you're running freeze comps with her like if she is your like freeze enabler like dude they're stuck there like the icicles are going to freeze them inside of the aoe and they are stuck there just taking extra damage at C5, our elemental skill gains three levels, which is fine. And then at C6, using Trail of the Killin causes the next Frost Flick arrow shot within 30 seconds not to require charging. So that's actually pretty nice because you can just kind of keep firing off extra bloom damages and stuff like that. But you know, C6 is... <laughs> So when it comes to building Ganyu, I do think there is a clear path to building DPS. There is also a support build that could warrant some, you know, use cases for certain teams. But essentially, I think most value is going to come from being a DPS. But again, may vary by your team setup. But essentially, we're going to talk about being a DPS first. So in terms of like top choice of weapons, uh, by the math, all right, max like capabilities Amos's bow ends up pulling the best numbers math wise but in practice it may not end up being the best weapon this is just going to kind of take a little bit more time to kind of work itself out but so far this this bow has put up some really really nutty numbers I've seen like a crit against a Registine for 92,000 yeah pretty pretty stupid stuff uh also skyward harp is going to do some ton of work uh, if you play through the story quest i'm not going to spoil any of that but i did actually release a video on that for the members of the channel if you're interested in that you can hit join on the channel page the the story quest actually makes you play with skyward harp so that's uh, also another great option it does actually do some pretty nutty damage but best free to play option if you are a low spender or a poor old man like me 
Prototype Crescent makes a ton of sense because it's going to increase your attack. It's uh, It's got attack as its substat, so it's not gonna increase crit rate, which is some, uh, there's some issues with some other bows that you end up like overcompensating for certain things and it's kind of just wasted potential. But the Prototype Crescent does not fall to that and it is an amazing weapon. I have been using it thus far and it is, it's nice. Black Cliff Orbo actually could do a ton of work here as well, simply because it has crit damage built on it. You could literally max like a crit damage build out on her. I saw this guy had 250% crit damage on her. Like, dude, that's nuts, dude, that's so crazy. Uh, but yeah, you could definitely max her out on crit damage if that's kind of like what you're going for is like a straight up like weak point hit, then Black Cliff Orbo makes a ton of sense. And then we do have the Veridescent Hunt, which I think I was watching Jinx and Tuner's uh, stream when they were going over some like frame data and stuff. I think the most important thing that I heard them say was that Veridescent Hunt may be mechanically the best weapon for her because of how it groups things together and it sticks like her ult in a really solid position. If you don't have a, a grouping character like Sucrose or Venti or something like that, then the Veridescent Hunt could make a ton of sense for Ganyu, but it also does have crit rate attached to it. So it's not like amazing in that sense, but eh, it's it's still really, really good. I, I have it and I may end up testing it, but we'll we'll just have to see. And then of course you do have the stringless uh, beings that it has elemental mastery on it could actually provide a ton of work. If you are specifically running a melt comp or anything like that, it could actually do really well. Now, in terms of the artifacts, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this out of the way first. There are several different builds that you can do. Yes, you can use all four pieces of Blizzard Strayer if you want to, but no, it is not the end all be all set. It is currently what I have been running. It's really fun to run but it's also not 100% necessary because if you are going for a like weak point type of thing, we'll talk a little bit more about the bloom effect when we do like some demonstrations, but essentially the bloom effect off of your second level charge shot is not directly affected by the crit rate. If you hit a guaranteed weak point, that shot is a crit, guaranteed. But the bloom, because it is a separate effect it needs to go through the system as if it wasn't a crit rate to find out if it was a crit it's not guaranteed so that's one of the things that you know having this four piece could actually help you out a lot because as we saw that bloom's damage scaling is stupid insane so it could work for that but it's still not the end all be all set it's just it's really really good don't get me wrong but there are other options I know some people are going to be wondering about the Wanderer's Troop set. It is also really, really good, but I think it's very specific to a team comp if you are building it. Otherwise, it's kind of like stuck in this weird situation where it kind of helps a little bit, but it, you can get more value elsewhere. If you are running a very specific team comp, this could work. If you do want to try this out, I do encourage you, based on notes that other people have been testing, test out either sucrose or venti which have a uh, veridescent veneer on them so ganyu veridescent veneer user bennett and jangling as your four characters set that up as a reverse melt comp so use bennett and jangling to apply as much pyro as possible and then use ganyu to do charge shots this this will do a ton of work it will actually do a ton of damage And then for just an overall generalist, if you just wanna do decent in more places than not, two pieces of Glad and two pieces of Blizzard Strayer are actually going to carry you for quite a while. The extra attack from Gladiator and the extra cryo damage bonus from Blizzard Strayer, just, it, it just works. And I haven't tested that one yet. I've just been running Blizzard Strayer, but we'll test that when we get to the demonstration. Now, when it comes to your stats and how you wanna work on these, um, cryo damage is a pretty much given on the goblet here. You definitely wanna to try to have as much cryo damage in this build as possible. Although I do actually wanna try a couple of different things. Uh, we may save that for another video, but uh, cryo damage goblet, definitely gonna be preferred. Crit rate, crit damage, of course, um, if you are, depending on how you work this, if you are working with a completely like laser focus on weak point, then crit damage here makes a ton of sense. If you want more of like a generalist, like you just do good damage uh, for the most part, crit rate still makes a ton of sense. Kind of just trying to keep that one to two ratio. If you ever break that one to two ratio and go heavily into crit damage, just make sure that you focus more on weak point. And then of course, attack percent on the, um, the sands just makes tons of sense here. Any kind of energy recharge that you can get throughout here because of our burst uh, costing 60, it does make a little bit of sense to try to get as much energy recharge as you can. I wouldn't dedicate an entire piece to it, but trying to get as much energy recharge will help. 
any kind of elemental mastery would actually be really good as well. Just don't dedicate a piece to it. And then as a DPS, of course, you know, crit rate, crit damage substats on all these pieces would definitely make sense. Now, as a DPS, you definitely want to focus on your normal skill first, because of course you are going to be using it most often. Then you want to focus on your burst because it is going to do some nutty damage. And then you can focus on your elemental skill, kind of like how I've been doing. Now, as a support, our main deal with being a support is helping to apply cryo as much as possible. Uh, since we do have some pretty nutty cryo damage built into the kit, we can just kind of do, you know, some melt comps and stuff like that. Uh, focusing on uh, using our bursts as often as possible is going to be the main goal here. Now, as far as best in slot weapons, there are kind of some issues with what we would consider best in slot. There is a tie, essentially. The stringless does actually do really, really good good if you are running the reverse melt comp and you are trying to build Ganyu as not the main DPS that's going to be on the field doing the damage all the time, but simply the quick switch to do cryo damage and then switch back to your pyros, stuff like that. Uh, stringless makes a ton of sense. Otherwise, mathematically, Amos's bow has shown to be, you know, best in slot outside of that. But like I said, it's still pretty early. So just kind of keep that in mind. And of course, Skyward Heart makes a ton of sense here. Black Cliff Warbo, pretty much the exact same things as the DPS build. It's just, it's gonna come down to the artifacts that really make or break this. But uh, one thing that we didn't mention that um, could be useful is the Royal Bow does make some sense. And then outside of that, it's pretty much the exact same stuff. It's just the, the priority of them change. If you have the Stringless, that's probably your top priority if you're running Melt Comps. Otherwise, it's the same stuff. Now for these artifacts though, this is where it's going to break a little bit open. So Blizzard Strayer at a two piece, okay? Just, just two pieces and two piece of Noblest. So since our main goal is to do a ton of damage with our burst and then swap off so that we can, you know, just do melts and stuff like that. Uh, this makes a ton of sense. Having these two sets, extra cryo damage, extra burst damage, it just makes perfect sense for the burst. Now, if you don't have the Blizzard Strayer farmed out just yet, if you are weary of leveling up certain pieces, then Gladiator's Finale and Noblis actually pair really well together. Or vice versa, if you don't have Noblis set up, you could go with Gladiator's Finale and Blizzard Strayer. Just kind of depending on what your artifact situation is, you kind of mix and match those three sets. And then I guess if you really wanted to, you could go with a full four piece of Noblis. Regardless though, just make sure that we still do have a cryo based cup on here. Crit rate, crit damage, of course and attack percent on our timepiece. But as far as substats go, we definitely wanna to try to prioritize energy recharge throughout all of this, elemental mastery again, and then any kind of attacks that we can get in here will also do us really well. For talents as a support, you definitely wanna focus on your burst first and foremost, then you can focus on your elemental skill. And if you really want to you focus on your normal attack, but our main goal is just to literally use our elemental burst to the fullest of its potential as often as possible. So let's, uh, let, let me just kind of show you what I'm working with just so you can kind of have like your, your mind based on what you have, you can kind of make some judgments for yourself. We're working with the prototype Crescent refinement Two. I made it literally today, uh, boosted it to level 60. It's just so that we could use it here. This is first initial run that we're going to do is a full four piece of the blizzard strayer with a cryo cup. Um, the exact stats that we're going to be rocking is, as you can see, 1305 on the attack. That's perfectly fine. Uh, crit damage is what I am going for with the set at 147.2. Energy recharge. There's been a couple of people that said, like, as a DPS, like, you don't really need a ton of energy recharge because your, your burst is going to be up uh, a lot. So, as you can see, we don't have a ton of that worked in there, but... 53.7% on the cryo damage. And uh, this is just kind of the like makeshift team that I've been running her with um, just as like a little bit of fun. All right, all right. So we got to take down these two towers. So my main goal here is to uh, just do damage, right? So as you can see, I'm level 60 and that was like 9,000 damage right there. That's, that's, that's a lot right that's that is a lot that that's a lot holy sh all right so so that we can get these guys grouped up here and then we'll throw this down and as you can see this burst literally just yeah i needed to position that a lot better all right so you can kind of see boom boom like it actually charges pretty quick 
So I'm going to elemental skill, and you can see that that dash backwards is straight from her. That's that's not me doing it. So it's kind of neat. Um, blows up, does some pretty good damage. Yep, we can bloom there. The cool thing is, is the way that like everything ends up getting situated. If if something is is affected by or even not affected by cryo, just affected by hydro and you freeze it, the bloom automatically is going to get that insane crit buff. So it does end up like having a high crit rate, not necessarily a high crit damage though. So that actually does end up getting the high crit rate from uh, from Blizzard Strayer, um, which is actually kind of nice. Okay, now for this second setup, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to switch this with, it is gonna have higher crit damage, but it's it's gonna basically be a split and we're gonna do two piece it's gonna have a better feather but it's gonna be a higher overall stats but it's gonna be two piece and two piece you can kind of see here extra cryo damage bonus and extra attack from gladiators which ends up putting us at 1560 which is pretty high um considering but it does take away our energy recharge and it does buff up our crit damage slightly or was that a little bit lower i can't remember Either way, a flat 1,000, 1,000 attack gained from that set. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so let's go see. I haven't personally tested this out yet. I don't know uh, I don't know how this is gonna work, but I just wanna see how well this works. And I know this is going to just completely. Uh, she kills things too fast, okay? It's too fast. That's that's a lot of damage. Oh my god. It still does so much damage, dude. It's gnarly. Oh my god. That's nuts, dude. Like this is this is C0 level 60. Level 60 weapon. Like this isn't this isn't like a level 90 showcase. This isn't like Oh my gosh. Dude, dude, the combo is just too much fun, man. Like it's it's too much fun. <laughs> okay, la last little experiment. Just just because I'm curious. Um, no cryo damage bonus. I know this isn't gonna be like typical for most people to build. I just want to see if this works. Uh, physical damage bonus though, and we're actually going to switch to the compound bow. Um, now the compound bow is a little bit buffed up more than the um, the the crescent. But just to kind of see, uh, we're rocking 1480, so not quite as high on the attack there. But crit damage still looks good. Uh, physical damage, uh, I don't know if we should do... Let's try this. 1520. So that's still really good. 1520, uh, 55, 104, and 146. Let's just... Just because just I want to see what it looks like, I just got to try it. Now, I think that the only thing that really is going to hold her back is her attack speed. That's the only thing that I can really see going, like, badly for her. Although that, I mean, that was still a lot of damage right there. Yeah, see, like, she just doesn't attack very fast. Hmm. I mean, that's still nice damage. Let's do a full one here. See, like, that's still a ton of damage. I feel like... I feel like the physical build is kind of similar to how it feels on Fischl. In the sense... I, I think Fischl does it better. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like Fischl's best situation to be in is not a physical build by any means it's good but it's not her best foot forward so to speak so this go around let's actually use sucrose instead of venti just because i feel like more people are likely to have sucrose Oh, 
over here, big boy. He's just like looking around. He doesn't know what to do. I mean, when it crits, it, it does good. But I don't know. I, I, I'm going to say this and you guys can disagree. Physical build could work, but it's definitely not her like best foot forward. I've actually been thinking a lot lately that I want to switch my official build to something else because I don't feel like official as my main DPS makes as much sense anymore with all the characters that I do have built. She definitely should be more of a support for me, but I don't know. Now that I have Ganyu, this is kind of what like I've uh, been looking forward to building. So. Maybe Ganyu becomes like new main DPS and Fischl becomes a you know support for me. But I don't know. We'll see. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, Zhang Li is actually up next. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get back on track on schedule after this. So see ya. Major shout out to Cherry Blue, who is a YouTube member.